Okay. So welcome everybody. So we, we are going to, to attend the presentation of the th master thesis of Victor Buendia. It's called Modeling Quorum Sensing Mechanism in Bacteria Populations. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, as uh, he has said, uh, I am Victor Buendia. Today I'm going to defend my master thesis, which has been directed by Manuel Matias and Ricardo Martinez Garcia. Okay. So, First, I'm going to start defining what is a uh, quorum sensing. It is uh, a third to third communication mechanism and it allows bacteria to trigger collective behaviors at the population scale. So, this works due to the release of a signal molecule. Okay? Uh, bacteria release this signal molecule that diffuses into the medium and then they can detect which is the amount of the signal molecules surrounding it. Uh, this detection allows bacteria to decide when to start uh, doing some, uh, some kind of behavior and also the signal molecule is an outinducer so its production uh, depends on the concentra detected concentration of the, of uh, the signal okay? this leads to the existence, let's say, of two different states one inactive in which uh, the, we have a low rate of uh, releasing uh, the signal an active one in which we have a high rate of uh, release of the signal and then also the uh, behavior that is uh, this signal control that we are going to focus in uh, this the, the public goods okay these public goods are as a product that are released by bacteria and are able to provide a, a benefit <coughs> for all for all the cells in the system we call it public because it is available for for every cell in the system and it is often uh, regulated by a quantum sensing system this is because uh, the public goods are costly to produce and then uh, uh, bacteria have to invest energy producing these uh, public goods and they cannot invest it in reproducing so the reproduction rate decreases uh, even when the public good pro provides a benefit to the individuals uh, the producer has uh, uh, more cost than the benefit pro produced by the public good and we need at least uh, a minimum density of individuals uh, producing this, uh, this extra product in order to have uh, net benefit for the population. So that is uh, the objective, let's say, of the quorum sensing is to avoid the production of public good before we have uh, uh, this, uh, this density and then we can uh, start producing the public good when we know it is going to be beneficial. Okay? We are going to focus in this biological model, the Pseudomonas aeruginosa, which is a uh, human pathogen. It can infect several areas of our body and uh, it is able to become resistant to antibiotics so it uh, often gives problems to, to medics and so on but we are going to focus only in the quorum sensing uh, Pseudomonas aeruginosa has two different quorum sensing pathways the LAS and the RHA and uh, we are going to focus only in the LAS each one of the, of the pathways has uh, its own signal molecule and so on but uh, we are going to focus only in this because it uh, regulates the production of one public good among other things which is the elastase. Elastase is used to uh, decompose several proteins and that can be uh, used then uh, as nutrients for the bacteria increasing the reproduction rate. This pathway has two kinds of mutants, one is the signal negative and another one is the signal blind. The signal negative does not produce the signal but it is able to react to it producing public good. And the signal blind, it is uh, not able to react to the signal, but uh, it is able to produce it at a fixed rate. So it is not going to have these uh, two states in active or active. It simply produces the, the signal at a fixed rate. It is important to know that uh, one single population of these grow less than the wild type normal, let's say, uh, strain, because uh, they cannot produce the public good by themselves. However, if you put, for example, a mixed population of wild type and then one of these mutants, they are able to get the public good produced by, produced by the wild type, and then they grow m more than the wild type because they are able to take benefit of the public good that is produced by the, by the wild type. Then also they outcompete this wild type because they don't have the cost of producing the, these sets of products. This leads to what is uh, called the tragedy of the commons because as we increase the proportion of uh, cheaters in the system of these mutants uh, the available the amount of public good decreases because we have less white type and then we don't have uh, so much public good and the fitness of uh, the entire population decreases 
So we are, are trying to model this and we are going to use an individual basic model uh, that consists in particles that are in a two-dimensional space that can diffuse and they can reproduce following uh, this, uh, this equation or can die by competition for a, for a resource. It is important to know that in the, in the reproduction we have this growth rate that this is going to be different for every individual and it depends on the, on the benefit provided by the public good and the cost of producing extra products. And that this model has a population size that uh, behaves uh, similarly to uh, a logistic growth and it is going to saturate at some point. That this is important. Okay, how do we compute this uh, growth rate that we have said that are individual uh, for each one of the particles? Uh, we have to track which is the concentration surrounding one individual. Uh, so what we think, uh, the first thing we, we can think of is to try to represent all the molecules explicitly on the system. But uh, computationally in the simulations, this is uh, difficult. And then uh, what we have to do is, uh, well, what we have to do, what we have decided to do is to uh, represent it in an implicit way. So, for example, here you see that uh, this uh, individual is uh, releasing uh, an exoproduct and then in one tiny step it is able to reach this, uh, this other individual. But, for example, the public good is less diffusive, so the public good released by this individual is not able to reach the, the yellow one. So basically we have uh, changed this uh, ex explicit, uh, explicit representation of the exoproducts by two different scales of detection and then we work only with the, with the bacteria. Then for the signal, we, what we do is to count everybody inside this area and then we weight it differently because uh, inactive individuals and active individuals have a different rate of production and in the case of uh, public good we only have to count active individuals because they are the only ones that are producing it. Also, in the case of public good, uh, you have here the mathematical expression for this detection. We have added these heavy side functions because uh, the public good can provide a, has a limit in the, in the benefit it can provide. So it is si something similar to the first graph uh, I showed in one of the first slides, has this kind of, uh, of saturating behavior. And we approximate it by uh, a growth that is linear and then saturates. Uh, so this is why we use this uh, here's the theta functions, and then the individual growth rates are here, and you can see this is a base growth minus a cost and plus uh, the benefit provided by the, the public goods. And the difference in the cost uh, depends in if it is active, inactive, or it is active, because the amount of uh, produce extra products is different. Then we take all this, and then we do the computations that are detailing the work, and in the well mix uh, limit where there is no spatial structure, uh, we find this piecewise system for the first moment in the number of particles in, in the system, okay? So you see that this is a logistic equation and uh, the system is going to start here, but before it reaches the carrying capacity, we are going to be in this point in which all the individuals activate and they start producing the public good. The public good is able to increase the carrying capacity of the system because it provides a benefit for the individuals and we can see it, he we can see it here and this alpha p, it turns out that it's greater than delta. And then this is a system that is not able to saturate, this, uh, this equation does not saturate, and this divergent, and this grow exponentially until we get the next point, which is this saturation of the benefit provided by the public good, where we enter again into a logistic state, and uh, then the system saturates at this carrying capacity, okay? So it is a, a combination, let's say, of a logistic kind of, of equations. If we assume that we have a spatial structure, then we can write this equation for the density uh, and where we have to have the diffusion and the other things are similar, but uh, they can see not so clearly. This is the growth of the non-active bacteria in this point, the growth of the active individuals that the difference is only the cost, and then we have here uh, this uh, production of public good before the saturation and the benefit of the public good after the saturation. And these two are like complementary. If you have one, then you, have the, then you have, don't have the other because of these heavy side theta, theta functions. That in this case, we cannot split as before because uh, the thresholds are, are local. Then if we return to our well mix with no, uh, with no structure approximation, we see that uh, this is 
the mean number of bacteria as a function of time. And we have also written the, the system for the second moment and we have computed the variance. And then you see here that the, there is a uh, discontinuity on the derivative that here cannot be clearly seen, but the variance is, is very clear. Okay? Also, when we compute uh, the, um, uh, the same in the individual basic model, which is the, the blue curve, you see that it is very similar and it follows very well the mean field equations we have written. This is the growth rate that you can see most of the points like here in this uh, linear plus saturation behavior, but you have a lot of fluctuations. These fluctuations you have to control it very well because they can affect the carrying capacity of the system. <coughs> if uh, the carrying capacity of the system changes due to the fluctuations, then the mean field uh, equations you have written for, for the system are useless. So we are interested in controlling these fluctuations in order to minimize them so we can describe our system using the mean field approach. Uh, so this is important and in the work uh, there is uh, a bit of discussion on how can we control these fluctuations. Then uh, we want to parameterize our data and uh, for that we have used this data from this article Digal et al. in Nature uh, and we, this is experimental data from this, from this article. This data represents a culture of bacteria that is growing in a medium that has uh, nutrients. So the benefit of the public good is useless because uh, I remind you that the elastase, uh, its function is to produce nutrients for, for bacteria. So if we have these nutrients in the system, the public good is useless. And you see here, when bacteria activate, here they start producing this public good. But the public good has a cost of producing, but not a benefit because we have a lot of nutrients in the system and the population decreases. Then this difference here between this, uh, this uh, case and this one uh, can be related with the cost of producing extra products. And this can be used as an estimation to get some of the parameters. In addition to that, we have several strains that have uh, little differences and can allow us to get some of the parameters. Here you have a simulation of the, this blue curve here that corresponds to the wild type in a rich medium. You see that the time of activation is more or less similar. The maximum number of uh, individuals is also similar. The only difference is, is the shape of uh, this uh, maximum point, which uh, corresponds to the fact that we have used this approximation for the growth rate that is uh, linear and then saturates in a, um, let's say, uh, well, this thing, not this continuous, but. Um, that it is uh, not a smooth function, and then uh, we have this peak here. Okay, <coughs> we go now for the case in which we have two different populations. One is wild type, and the other is one of these cheaters, the signal blind or the signal negative, and we want to see how much the cheaters are able to grow in comparison with the wild type. For this uh, purpose, we use the relative fitness, which is uh, a parameter that uh, in biology is able to measure that and we plot it uh, versus this uh, initial concentration of cheaters and what you can see is that as uh, we increase the initial proportion of cheaters the, the relative fitness, how much the cheaters grow in comparison with uh, the wild type is decreasing <coughs> this uh, has been measured in some experiments for example in the article I showed you before for Digal et al. in Nature they measure this and they find exactly this uh, kind of dependence. So it is interesting to know that qualitatively our model was, works good. The only problem is that here uh, the values, quantitative values in the, in the vertical axis, they are not very good. They should be uh, at least higher than one because the cheater should be able to outcompete the, the Y type. But it's a problem of the parameterization of the model because uh, from before we cannot get all the parameters. And then uh, this leads to quantitative problems to adduce uh, correctly this scale. But at least the qualitative dependence is, uh, is good and is compatible with the experiments. With the signal negative, you have a, uh, a, similar, a similar dependence, but you have to take into account that signal negative is able to produce public good by itself. So at the end, the mechanism that uh, reduces the relative thickness, it is simply uh, that as uh, we increase the initial proportion of cheaters, <coughs> we have uh, less signal available, and at the end, the, the, uh, the, the population is in, not able to activate because, because we don't have enough signal to activate. And then if we don't have enough signal to activate, uh, the two strains cannot start producing the public goods, 
and the relative fitness decreases for this, uh, for this reason. Okay. Then what happens when we go into uh, a spatial description in what we can have uh, a spatial structure? Okay. First, you can see that uh, when we grow bacteria in a cluster, uh, the growth is faster than if we grow bacteria in this uh, well mixed approximation. So uh, the growing in a cluster is uh, faster than in, uh, in this uh, random approach. And if you start with random initial conditions, you are going to see this clustering. Uh, this has been studied and it is known that uh, when you have these stochastic reactions of birth and death, uh, the local uh, nature of the birth reaction gives uh, rise to these, uh, to these clusters. But also the quantum sensing has uh, relevance here because, uh, for example, if you take uh, this point here, it is more probable that bacteria are going to activate in this point than in this point in which the density is low. And then when bacteria in this point activate, they start reproducing faster and this enhances the growth of the cluster. So this is important because it can also enhance how cl cluster grows and it can affect the, this spatial structure. So we want to, to, to see how this uh, affects also the mixed populations in which we have a signal blind cheater and a wild type, uh, and a wild type uh, strain. And what we have here is that mm, uh, we change the diffusion constant of the, the, the individuals in the system. So when we reduce the diffusion constant, the spatial structuring of the system becomes more important. And then you see that when there is an important uh, role of the, of the space, of the clustering, then the relative fitness of the cheaters is decreasing. And this is important because uh, this happens because uh, a cluster of, uh, let's say, a wild type, if it is uh, far away from a cluster of cheaters, the cheaters cannot diffuse to reach, uh, to reach the cluster of, uh, of wild types. And if they cannot do that, then the benefit that they are going to receive is uh, very low. And this is the mechanism that reduces the, the relative fitness in uh, in this case. In addition to that, we can uh, go also for these, uh, uh, these experiments in which I, experiment simulations in which, in which we change the um, uh, diffusion constant, let's say, of the exo products. So basically what we do is to change the scale of detection, which is related, as I said before, uh, to, the, to the diffusivity of these exo products. So you have here that I have changed the diffusivity of the public good, and as I make the public good more private, less diffusive, you, we see that the cheaters are reducing the, the relative fitness. And this is very important because it is more or less the same mechanism before, as before. If, uh, the, if the good is more private, then the, uh, it cannot reach the, the mutant strains, and then uh, these mutants cannot have the benefit provided by the public good because they don't have access to it, basically. An interesting experiment it is to do the same with the signal negative uh, and uh, changing the diffusivity not of the public good but of the signal. And you see that the behavior is uh, quite similar. The <coughs> and this, uh, it is the same. As I make more private the signal, uh, the, the signal uh, the signal molecule, then the, si the signal negative strain has uh, problems to access to, to this signal. And they cannot activate and they cannot start their own production of public goods. And since they don't have their own production of public goods, then they have problems to, more problems to grow and their relative fitness is uh, reduced. This has been uh, noticed by Mann uh, and some collaborators that uh, have published this year uh, one article uh, doing this kind of experiments and so more on this direction and uh, the conclusion of uh, these authors is that the signal, uh, the signal molecules is itself a public good because it shares some of the important characteristics of other public goods it enhances the, uh, the growth of the population and it also it's, uh, it's important how much uh, public it is for uh, the case of, uh, in which we have a non-producer strain. Okay, so our results are compatible with the ones given in, in, in the experiment, at least qualitatively. So let me briefly conclude. Uh, we have studied uh, the growth of bacteria in the case in which we have a public good production regulated by a quantum sensing mechanism. And we have studied also uh, the, which is the relative fitness of a mutant strain so to characterize what is the behavior of these mixed populations and we have seen that as we increase 
the initial number of, uh, of uh, cheaters, the initial proportion of cheaters, the relative fitness decreases. And this is, in, 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 this is compatible with the experiments done by biologists. And finally, we have uh, done some uh, simulations, uh, checking which is the role of the space. And uh, we have seen that this, uh, it has a very important role because uh, it is able to enhance the growth of the single population. And also for the mixed populations, uh, it, is in, it is important because uh, it uh, gives uh, to the wild types some strategies that can uh, avoid the invasion by the cheaters. Uh, by structuring the space, making more private the, the goods they are producing, they can try to avoid the invasion by cheaters. <coughs> the only problem is that the model ha is difficult to parameterize, even uh, from the mean field equations, there are several parameters that are very difficult to, uh, to identify, and this leads to a quantitative disagreement with the experiments. So, my proposal is to uh, use a different approximation to the problem, which is uh, try to write a PDE model for, for the problem, and we can do it in two ways. First, use our mean field approach, take the equation we have written for the space, and then try to do approximations to the parameters that we cannot identify with experiments, until we find uh, something that can be uh, related with the experiments and uh, that we can, uh, let's say, estimate or feed in a, in a more precise way, to have uh, quantitative agreement with experiments. Or we can go to a new model in which we use the insight that uh, we have learned doing this one to try to keep the most important features of the model, that the ones that we know are most important for it, and then try to uh, reproduce explicitly the uh, dynamics of the exoproducts as uh, new density fields uh, in order to recover this information that the division model is uh, uh, somewhat missing. Okay, We are approximating it. So, that's everything I wanted to tell you about the work, so uh, I hope you, you are interested in it and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Victor.